Whoa! Yeah, really? Oh my god! Oh my god! Wow! Oh, I'm sorry, I What, you gotta go! Wow! You gotta go! Whoa, you won't believe it! You won't believe it! Really? Whoa! Really? Wow! 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 Really, wow! So I'm the one, the only, the Eddie, and I'm here with Racing. Racing. Yeah, and uh, today we have a special guest on the show, uh, Ramen and a Half. We are here with Daryl Gilbo. He's a voice actor. Welcome to Ramen and a Half. Thank you. It's cool to be here. <laughs> so, um, you know, for those watching this who don't know, just uh, name a few of the characters that you've done okay. in the past. Cool. Uh, some of the main ones, I guess, would be Mikado in Durarara. Um, also, recently, Amaiman in Blue Exorcist. Uh, Nora in Nora Rise of the Yokai Clan, uh, Hiragashi in When They Cry. Um, it's Hiragashi When They Cry, and I played Satoshi. Uh, <laughs> uh, video games I've done uh, Beautiful Joe, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, um, Tai Chi Chi in Dynasty Warriors 6, and uh, also in the Dynasty Warriors Coming 8, I have two new characters. Oh, cool. Yeah. So a few things like that. You said you played Mikado. Yes. How, how did it feel playing such a character that such a dynamic role in the anime? It was awesome. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, at first when I when I got the show and I started doing like the first episode, mm -hmm. I knew that this would be a just, you know, kind of a big show. It just yeah. felt yeah. great, you know, and and the great thing about Mikado is um, being able to sort of meet all the characters, you know, of uh, Ikibukuro, mm -hmm. you know, and sort of having that. Um, because he's new, I was sort of new too to it, mm -hmm. to the neighborhood. <laughs> so it was kind of cool that I got to kind of see the show and see all the different characters as Mikado. So and you're as able myself. to like, live as a character. Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so how do you prepare for a role like that? Um, well, you know, at first we, when we audition, they tell us uh, what the character is like, his personality. Mm -hmm. And then when you see what he looks like, you can sort of, you, you get a feel for it. And then you know, okay, this is the kind of voice I think he would sound like. Um, and it's really, other than that, we can't really prepare much because we get the script the day that oh, we do it. Okay. Oh, okay. We don't, yeah. Cool. We don't get to see it in advance. That's amazing. Yeah, so yeah, we have. such a good job. Right, so we learn, we learn basically as, as the storyline as we're doing it. So I didn't even know, I don't want to say in case anyone hasn't seen Do Da Da Da, but I didn't even know that what his secret was mm -hmm. oh. until it was revealed that episode. When I was recording, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> until I got to the secret. And then it's like, you know, I turned to the booth and I'm like, really? <laughs> I have a question. I know in Japan they like to record in groups when they do voice right. acting. Right. And I've noticed um, some American voice actors, they usually go in a single sound booth. Right. Which do you prefer? Well, we're always separate. Separate? Uh, okay. in, in the States. So you guys don't record together no, at all? No. And the reason is because, you know, the product in Japan uh, is already done. Mm -hmm. So, like, when they're, when they're recording in Japan, they, they don't have to worry about lip uh, mm -hmm. the lip flaps and syncing. Okay. So the product's already done when it comes to us. So we have to concentrate on hitting the lip flaps. Uh, and it can change because if, if uh, in Japanese, let's say the character says something and then the, uh, in the dub they've written the line, but the line's too long. You know, too many words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll say sometimes, okay, uh, do it faster mm -hmm. to try to make it fit. But even if you do it faster, it just may not fit. So they'll have to change it right then and there. Uh, so if you had a group of actors and having to do that for each individual one, it, it would just take too much time. So it's actually more time efficient for us to do them individual. individual. Oh, okay. Right. Have you ever taken any like personal liberties with your characters before? Personal like, liberties. Like, um, you know, instead of following the script, you just changed the line because you felt like, oh, I just felt like that would have sounded cooler, that would have yeah. sounded better. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, or sometimes, you know, we goof up or, you know, goof around. Like if you think something's funny, you'll say, you know, so just yeah, to make yeah. them laugh, no. you know. But sometimes if you feel like the line isn't working, mm -hmm. you can say, well, how about if I, what if I said it like this? And, you know, they're open to it at times, oh, okay. yeah, so, which is good. So, um, so you guys use uh, speakers or headphones when you're Headphones, yeah. I always, uh, myself, I like to have one, one, one that's kind of like half, mm -hmm. so I can kind of hear what I'm saying oh, as well as yourself. that. Because like, you have to have the headphones because you have to hear what the the director saying as well, as yeah. well as 
seeing the anime. So when you're recording ADR, since you can't record mm-hmm. with the other voice ac- actors right. or actresses, is it is it harder for you to get the energy? Because you, you know, not really. Because once you're in and you start focusing on your character, you know, you start feeling like this um, momentum, mm-hmm. you know, and you just kind of keep keep on with it. Uh, and especially because you're reacting, even if you're just reacting to the Japanese, because it's played to us first. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes, if let's say an actor has come in ahead of me, then I'll hear it in English. Then I can respond to it. You know, it just depends what actors come in first. You know, if I've come in first, then they can hear my voice. You know, that sort of thing. So, are there any differences in uh, recording for an anime versus a, a video game? Uh, with anime, we always see the show because we have to match the lips. With video games, we don't always get to see any. Sometimes you see nothing. It's just they give you a blank screen. And then you yeah, just and you just have to do it. Talking. And then they'll tell you, okay, you're, uh, you know, you're fighting this dragon. It's a really big dragon, and you're getting hit really hard, and your body's being slammed against a rock. You know, so Make then a okay, for that. right. So yeah. you have to know because what if the character, you know, if I'm just screaming and not knowing why I'm screaming, it w- may not match. So you have to use your imagination a lot. Okay. Yeah. Or, or they'll have you do different sounds, and you never know what sound they're going to pick. You, you just know. have to think of it in your head. Right. Oh, I yeah. didn't know it was nice. that com- like, it's oh, really yeah. complex. It's actually. very complex. Yeah. So it sounds like you've done a wide range of characters. Do you have like a favorite mm-hmm. with some of them, or are, are you like some of the other people who are just, oh, they're all my baby, or <laughs> it's only the new one that's my favorite? Yeah. Or? No, they're all my babies. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's kind of cool that, uh, I mean, my first main character was in a show that some people have seen, some people haven't, but it's called Overman King Gainer, and it was oh, a God. Tomino show. Uh, it was a little more, more lighthearted than Mobile Suit Gundam, you know, but it's a mecha style, and... Uh, an exodus kind of thing going on and because that was my first lead I think I have kind of partial to it because I learned so much doing that character but uh, but I've loved everything I've done because you know each thing is so different and unique in its own way. What other projects do you have coming up or are you allowed to if you're allowed to talk about them? I don't know some some people are contracted to you can't say anything. Well I just finished a video game and they didn't tell me I couldn't say so I'm gonna say it even though they said I they didn't say anything, so I guess I can say it. <laughs> okay. But uh, I've done several Dynasty Warriors, and yeah. so there's a new one coming out in July, mm-hmm. uh, Dynasty Warriors 8. Yeah, and they've awesome. Yeah, so I'm two characters and two new characters that I've never done before, so that's kind of cool that I'm bringing, oh, okay. I'm able to do a totally different voice for both of them. Wow. So oh. my character will be Shushu and Yujin. Okay, so, yeah. so we'll definitely look out for this. Yeah. It's nice to hear. We'll That's get that cool. game here. Yeah, yeah. so. And of course, Nura uh, has just been released. Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan. It's about 50 episodes, two seasons. It's just been released on DVD, so if people are interested in seeing that. So now, what is your favorite part about this job? Like, what, what, do, you, what do you find rewarding about yeah. being a voice actor? You know, um, I mean, one of the parts, which, is, which I never expected, was actually coming to cons. I mean, <laughs> you know, that I get invited to these conventions. Now I'm here in San Jose at Fanime, mm-hmm. so it's amazing, you know, and I go all over the country and also some places around the world. And it's just, for me, it's incredible meeting the fans, meeting people who are, who are appreciative of what you've done in an anime or a video game, or, you know, they'll just come up to you and, oh, I love that character, or, you know, they get excited when they find out you've been part of a show. Because mm-hmm. um, when I first started, I'm doing a voice, you just do it in a booth, it goes out into space, you know, you don't know what's happening with it because it's not like theater where people can clap and applaud right there, you know, you know someone's watching so it. this is the way you can meet your fans. Exactly. Get your yeah. Oh, exactly. Out. And it, it's, it's a way just to, to know that, wow, people are watching, people are playing it, and, you know, they know it. So that's, that's been the most surprising thing for me is the whole thing about being invited to conventions and, and meeting the fans. Okay, so this next question is a little, I guess some would say silly, but um, <laughs> it's been asked to a couple of the voice, uh, past voice actors before, yeah. like um, Vic always tells a story at different cons, uh, Vic and Yonan. Um, yeah. What are some of the weirdest things you've gotten from a fangirl or a fan, or what are some of the weirdest fan moments you've experienced weirdest so far? Weirdest fan moments? Because like, Vic, he received hair. <laughs> a piece of paper envelope one year, and I remember he told that story at a Oh, Vic, you know, con. he attracts all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell him I said that. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know if I've had anything really weird, you know, for myself. Um, you know, everybody's been so great every time I, I, I meet people, you know. Um, 
So I, I can't really think of anything like really bizarre. I mean, I did have one time like a question. They were like, and it was two characters I had knew nothing about, and they asked. They said, "So if if this character and this character were in a fight, who'd win?" I was like, "Well, I don't even know the characters, and they're not in my show." So you know, just sometimes there's questions like that, you know, that I don't know how to answer. <laughs> I'd win. I don't know. Of course, my character would win. Yeah, yeah, my character would win if you were asking about my character. Yeah. So what's the weirdest thing a voice actor has ever said to you? Anything? I don't know. Who's the weirdest voice actor you ever had? I've ever met? Yeah, the weirdest. Maybe Johnny. <gasps> Johnny Young Bosch? He's a character. Like, he's like, I don't yeah. know, he's, he's out there. <laughs> Hi, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. He said it. No, I don't know. But uh, no, he's, he's a cool guy. He's, he he's is cool. a cool guy. I, I met him yeah. at um, in Sacramento yeah. a couple years back, and... Yeah, he's really cool. Awesome. And I think he's going to be at SAC Anime this year. Yeah, he's usually always at SAC Anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. His band, I Shine, yeah. always plays there. That's true. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for your time. Pleasure, thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay. Next time they're going to say I'm the weirdest one they ever so. <laughs> uh, Let's see what else could we do. <laughs> You think you can do like a small um, blurb maybe for our show? Because sure. our show is called Ramen and a Half. Absolutely. So you think you can do it in like a, a character voice? Sure. Okay, let me think of something really quick. Beautiful Joe here. Tune in to Ramen and a Half. Or so they say. <laughs> Boomerang. <laughs> Hi. Nice. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.